Hello friends, a warm welcome to yet another interesting session on instrumentation and controlling power plant industries. In our previous videos, we have already discussed about various type of flow meters used in power plant. And in continuation to our journey, we discussed in details about electromagnetic flow meters, ultrasonic flow meters and then about turbine flow meters. So in this video, we will be discussing our next flow meter which is again based on fluid velocity measurement. That is based on the principle that fluid flow rate is directly proportional to fluid velocity. Yes, you are right. It is none other than vortex flow meter. What is vortex flow meter? Its operating principle that is how does it measure the fluid flow rate? What are its important parts? Its types, advantages, disadvantages, where it is used means all about vortex flow meters we are going to cover in this session. So let's start understanding vortex flow meters step by step. Our vortex flow meters looks like this as shown in this picture. The design and process connections can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. It could be either flange type connection as shown in this first picture or it could be wafer type that is uh, we can say it is sandwiched between the flanges of the pipeline itself or it could be insertion type similar to a thermoval. If we look at its internals we can say uh, we can check its internal looks like this the major part uh, are or the main parts are the obstruction plate that is the vortex shader and the second is uh, its sensor that is vortex detector and third main part is electronics that is transmitter now coming to its operating principle whenever an obstacle is placed in a flowing fl uh, fluid path vortices are generated alternately on both sides of the obstacle here we can see up and down up was up is in blue color and down uh, down is shown in red color the frequency of vortex generator uh, generation is directly proportional to the fluid velocity and is independent of all other parameters that is we can say this frequency is directly proportional to velocity or we can say frequency is equal to k into velocity where this f is frequency of vortex generation v is velocity of fluid and k is a proportionality constant once we measure the fluid flow rate the fluid flow rate can be easily uh, sorry once we measure this fluid velocity the fluid flow rate can be easily calculated because we know fluid flow rate is equal to area of the pipe multiplied by the velocity next uh, coming to its uh, working in detail first the the first part is this obstruction in the flow uh, path this uh, this steel body is called buff plate or vortex shader here we see the working fluid strikes this vortex shader this one the one shown in uh, shown delta shaped in black color is the vortex shader if the fluid velocity is low then this vortex shading will not happen but as the fluid velocity increases above certain Reynolds number the vortices start shedding the generation of vortices is known as Kerman's effect or Kerman's uh, vortices and uh, the culmination point of these vortices will be approximately 1.2 times of the pipe diameter downstream of this vortex shader so we can say this is the point that is uh, 1.2 times downstream of the vortex shader to at this particular point we have to install our vortex detector or sensor to detect these generated vortices the sensor detects the uh, detects and counts the number of vortices generated further the sensor sends this uh, vortex count to the converter unit which is part of our electronics based on this vortex count input the converter unit calculates how much fluid is flowing through the pipeline and the fluid flow rate will be directly proportional to the number of what is generated next uh, the buff body or vortex shader shape and size is different from manufacturer to manufacturer and it is also dependent upon the application where it is used various shader shape could be round shape rectangular shape two part rectangular t bar or delta shape talking about types of vortex detector sensors we have different types of sensors available to measure the vortices they are thermal mechanical capacitive piezoelectric strain gauge sensor or ultrasonic sensor 
the most commonly used are piezoelectric sensors modern uh, vortex flow meters are also a compensated mass flow meters these are useful in saturated or superheated steam applications and also in liquid applications where liquid is near its saturation point here in addition to the volumetric flow measurement that is in gallons per meter sorry gallons per minute these flow meters also measure the process pressure and process temperature thus density variation is taken care to provide the mass flow rate otherwise what we do same flow compensation for density variation we have to do in our dc system remember that these density variations are due to change in the process pressure and temperature with respect to the density measured during calibration of this, this particular instrument under some specific pressure and temperature condition this pressure and temperature conditions are listed in the calibration certificate now we may require redundant flow measurement at certain applications for example in a power plant a pump may have to be protection tripped due to flow measurement that is the pump is going towards its runout conditions or maybe a wall need to be protection closed or even if in a few cases protection open based on the flow conditions so if uh, protection conditions are getting initiated based on this flow measurement then it is recommended to have uh, some redundancy either dual redundancy one out of two or triple redundancy to keep the safety in line without affecting the safety by single measurement failure next coming to its installation first uh, similar to rest other flow meters we have to match the flow direction marked on the flow meter with our process flow direction second is the need to keep all wetted parts flooded Wet vortex flow meters can be installed vertically, horizontally, or at any angle, at, as long as they are kept flooded. Means the, it should it should be fully filled to measure it uh, measure accurately. And third is to have at least minimum manufacturer recommended pipe straight length upstream and downstream of the flow meter to keep it unaffected by the flow turbulence due to sources like pumps, valves, bends, tees, etc. This straight line requirement vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. We can say as a thumb rule, if recommended minimum length is 10D upstream and 5D downstream, then it is desirable to double these straight, uh, straight lengths for better accuracy. That is 20D and upstream and 10D downstream. Coming to its various advantages, uh, the various advantages of vortex flow meters are wide range of applications uh, it can accommodate uh, liquid gases and steam all can withstand uh, high process pre uh, and pressure and temperature being a two wire device it is uh, efficient it has very efficient power consumption it does not have any moving part its turn down ratio is wide relatively low cost of installation and maintenance low sensitivity to process uh, condition variations and it uh, it has a very stable long term accuracy and repeatability vortex meter accuracy is based on in known value which we discussed k factor in this, remember in f is equal to k into v frequency of vortex generation is equal to a constant k factor multiplied by the fluid velocity so this k factor for each instrument is already tested and means uh, calculated in the laboratory itself and uh, it is uh, marked on the this uh, instrument face plate so that k factor defines its accuracy and uh, then there is no drift because uh, this is a frequency system it means uh, it has certain disadvantages too first is it is not suitable for low flow rates low flow rates are not capable of generating vortices and thus this type of flow meters are not applicable there but uh, we can uh, eliminate th this thing also by using reducers remember we know flow rate is equal to area into velocity by using flow reducers we are reducing cross-sectional area 
and thus for the same flow rate we are getting higher fluid velocity which can be easily measured by these vortex flow meters so reducers are a solution for low flow rates then uh, second issue is pressure loss vortex flow meters are actual volume flow meters like orifice meters these being intrusive meters like orifice meters will cause the pressure drop as flow is increased resulting in a permanent loss consequently liquids near their boiling point could introduce cavitation as the pressure, pressure across the meter drops below the vapor pressure of that liquid as soon as the pressure recovers above the vapor pressure the bubble will implode cavitation causes the meter to malfunction and should be avoided at all the times again uh, we, as we discussed higher minimum uh, length of straight pipe is required upstream and downstream of the vortex flow meters next is uh, next disadvantage is the pipe renault's number should be above 30000 minimum this means vortex flow meter can only be used for low viscosity fluids means in case of uh, high viscous fluids or slurries it is not recommended it cannot measure dirty media and uh, as we know piezoelectric sensors are used so external vibrations can cause measurement errors so friends that was all about vortex flow meters their principles their application their limitation and their specific installation requirements along with their advantages disadvantages hope i am able to clear the concept well we'll meet you in our next video till then stay safe stay, uh, stay healthy take care bye